We'll jump right in here with a bit of history of Unity's Zoom style show home, which is located just down the road from our offices here in Walpole, New Hampshire. Back in 2014, actually, uh, representatives of Green Build, which is the national organization that does a lot to support green and sustainable building. They're the people behind the LEED certification, LEED Silver, Gold, Platinum. Um, green Build puts on a conference every year and it's in a different city each year. And these are kind of a big deal. It sort of brings together the best and the brightest of, um, of the green building world. And there's also a trade show that accompanies the conference. And that's where anybody who has anything to do with creating green products and green systems and green materials, they will typically have a booth and be exhibiting at the green build show. So the folks from green build teamed up with the folks from Hanley Wood, which is kind of a media conglomerate that's focused on the construction trades, architecture, design, engineering. Um, to promote the Green Build Conference. And they approached Unity Homes, which at that time was a relatively new three-year-old company. We were founded in 2012 by Ted Benson. We're a spinoff of Benson Wood, which is a company that at that time had been around for about 40 years. They approached, uh, they approached Unity Homes and said, you know, it seems like Unity is a great little company, great little startup. We'd love for you folks to be featured uh, in the trade show at Green Build in Washington, D.C. in 2015, would you be interested in providing kind of building a demonstration home in the middle of the trade show floor for Green Build 2015? I think if they had asked anybody but Ted Benson, we probably would have said no. But Ted Benson being, um, being who he is and how he is, he said, sure, we can do that. We'd like to do that. That sounds exciting. And, uh, and let's go. So um, it's not what we normally do is build houses inside trade shows. Uh, we were going to have three days to actually assemble a complete working home. At least the electrical was to be working, not the plumbing, uh, in the middle of the trade show floor. Uh, so we, we worked really hard for the next 12 months or so to plan this thing and to pull it off. And, and it's one of those things that in, in retrospect, you sort of, you're glad you did it. But in the middle of it, um, we were wondering how it was all going to come together. So like a lot of these things, it starts with sort of an artist rendering. Um, this is a particular rendering that we had generated before anything was really designed or built to represent what this was going to look like so that Greenville and Hanley Wood could use it for their marketing purposes. But this kind of gives you an idea of sort of the goal that we were shooting for. Um, you can't build from a rendering. The way we build here at Unity is from 3D models. And these are end up being very elaborate 3D models in order to go into production because it's the 3D model that provides all the information to the computer controlled machines in our production facility that are gonna cut all the parts and pieces. And then we have a very automated system for putting them all together to build the panels that then get assembled into the house on your job site. So we had to do, we had, excuse me, we had to do the 3D modeling to start to make it real. Lots of discussions there about all the details and finishes and things like that. Here's a floor plan that may be a little bit hard for you to, to visualize because it's a bit small, but the idea is that that part of the home, including the two decks that's outlined with the, the dark black line, that's the part that we chose to tackle for assembling in the trade show hall in Washington, DC. The little part to the right, the connector, and then the angled garage are two parts that we built. Uh, we panelized them in our shop later and then added those to the house when we assembled it in its final resting place here in Walpole, New Hampshire. But in the in the slides that follow, the part that's outlined in the dark black line is what we're gonna be talking about having built um, first here in Walpole and then down in Washington, DC. So uh, in order to do something like this, where you have only three days to, where we had only three days to assemble the home in the trade show floor, we needed to do a lot more prefabrication than we would normally do for a typical Unity home. So as you're looking at these slides, uh, we run the risk of having you think that this is how all our homes are built. Uh, we don't go from a foundation to a completely finished home in three days on most of our projects, on any of our projects. Um, but we, so for this project, we had to do a much higher level of prefabrication here in the shop than we would normally do. It's not unusual for us to take on, you know, occasionally a pilot project or a demonstration project like this. Uh, Bensonwood has a long history of doing that. Um, and those of us who've been here for a while have been involved with various projects where we've kind of pushed the edges. Typically it involves Ted saying yes to somebody asking if we can do something, and then we all need to figure out how to actually make it happen. In this slide here, you may not be able to see, but there's uh, some, 
some glue conduit that's coming out at the bottom of the panel into a base chase and that's connected to an outlet. And basically we needed to make provisions for all of the wiring in the panels here in our shop before we shipped it down to Washington so that we could actually just kind of plug the wiring together on site in DC, kind of a plug and play wiring system. That's not something that we normally do for our houses. It's something that we have done occasionally in the past. It's something that we might do in the future, but that's an example of the kind of advanced prefabrication that we did for this project that we don't normally do. <clears throat> so here you can see the panel starting to come together. We also don't normally pre-assemble houses in our shop before we ship the panels to the site. We prefabricate the panels at our facility in Keene. We flat pack them, we tarp them, we load them onto trucks, we ship them to the site. And it's really on your job site that they are first, the panels are first assembled into the house. We don't pre-fit things, pre pre-sheetrock them either, which is what you're seeing in this picture. So again, we knowing that we had very little time, we wanted to make sure that everything would fit together, go together nicely. So we pre basically pre-assembled most of this house in our shop here in Walpole. This was even before we had the facility in Keene. Pre-assembled it here in Walpole, and here you can see some of the exterior walls going together that already have sheetrock on them. Here are a couple of other shots. Uh, looking at the what will end up being kind of the, the view side of the building or the, the front of the building, if you will. We've assembled an exterior deck here. Uh, the windows are being installed and we've got these big panels going together that will create that distinctive look of the zoom. And here's an inside shot as well. We installed all the sheetrock, we taped all the sheetrock. Um, what you probably can't pick up in this image because uh, it's pretty subtle is there are a couple of horizontal lines in the, the, in the panel joints basically that we ended up uh, treating as a design element because we were gonna have to assemble this in Washington as panels and we weren't gonna have time to be taping sheetrock and painting and installing tile and doing that all that other stuff that takes a while to dry, the kind of the so-called wet finishes. And so we needed to come up with details where we could pre-do all that here in Walpole, take the panels apart, then put them back together and, and not have to wait for things to dry. And so we in incorporated these various details that became a part of the look of the finished home uh, that allowed us to assemble it and then ultimately disassemble it and reassemble it here in Walpole. So here you see some of the siding going on. And again, we had to work out details for the siding that would allow us to put it on here and then just piece in a few pieces down in Washington. Um, and this is kind of a fun picture. It, it was a kind of a big deal back in 2015 when we did this, it got a lot of press and you're not gonna be able to tell that that's Maggie Hassan standing next to Ted Benson, the two people in the yellow safety vests. But at the time, Maggie Hassan was the governor of New Hampshire. She's now a, a US Senator from New Hampshire. And <clears throat> she came and visited uh, when this was underway and to wish us well. And it was, uh, it was nice to see her here. That was sort of an example of the kind of attention that this project drew for Unity back then. Um, so part of the project was panelized, the exterior walls, et cetera, and that's how we normally build. But at the time we were also building uh, 3D bathroom modules. So basically complete bathroom pods that we would then deliver to our Unity projects and crane into place as part of the raising. And the thinking there is that it's sort of a high value area, a bathroom, and there's a lot of trades involved and it takes a lot of time. And it made sense to us to at least try to do all that work in the controlled conditions of the shop and then fly the pods into the house as we were assembling the panels. We did probably 60 or 80 pods over a period of a couple of years and just found that it was hard for us to be, it's a great idea, but it was hard for us to be cost effective with the pods. But that actually led us to building two modules for the green build house. And those were the modules that contained the bathrooms and the kitchen. The one that we're looking at here is the kitchen module. So on the left of it is kind of an entryway. And then on the right is where the kitchen's gonna go. Um, and the floor plan, the green outline is of the, the module that had the two bathrooms in it, the master bath and the second bath, plus a mechanical space and a laundry area. So it's really, these are sort of heavily mechanically involved. And then uh, this blue outline is for the kitchen module that also included the entryway. So that just to orient you on the, the spaces that we are, that we modularized. Um, so here's Jay working on the computer, figuring stuff out for the module. And Jeff is in the background taping the sheetrock in the kitchen module. So that's gonna become the kitchen of the Zoom. 
And this is a, a view of the hallway side of the bathroom module where you can see that we've pre-installed all the plumbing in this module. Um, and we're looking at the back side of it. The doorway there is into the secondary bathroom where we've pre-installed the, ba the bathtub. And, and basically when these modules were done, the kitchen was essentially finished, counters, cabinets, painting, trim, light fixtures, everything, same thing with the bathroom. So these were very complete modules that we shipped down to Washington, D.C. And here's a photo of taking the kitchen module out of what was our module shop at the time, our pod shop, and putting it on a flatbed truck to be shipped down to Washington. Um, I should point out that this level of finish is, um, you know, it's something that modular home companies are getting closer to than we are typically. There are advantages and, van and disadvantages to it, to shipping big modules down the road. We've chosen to go the panelized route for uh, our homes. So this was a bit unusual for us, um, but given the circumstances, we chose to go that route. So module modularization and modular home group building is certainly a, a viable way to go. Um, it can be challenging to get the high performance from the modules, but there are companies that are doing it. And uh, so it's just another, another pathway of off-site fabrication. All right, so we, we pre-assembled everything here in Walpole as best we could. We disassembled it, we shipped it to Washington, and this is what the home looked like after it was assembled. What I'm gonna try to show now, and here's where things get a little tricky, um, is a time-lapse video of the assembly of this home down in Washington, D.C. If for some reason it doesn't work out, we'll come back to the presentation. I'm thinking this this will probably be fine because we were able to run it successfully earlier. And this is another video that's also available on Unity's YouTube channel if for some reason we run into glitches and you're not able to see it. So I'm going to switch things around a little bit here. I'm going to share a different tab. I'm hoping that you're all seeing this. I'm going to go to full screen and I'm going to run this video. And somebody let me know if you're not seeing the green bill video. There's the, the first module going in, the bathroom module. There's the second module, the kitchen module. Exterior walls, some interior walls going up. And those big walls with the windows. The decks. It's probably That was day one. I think this is probably day two. So the roof panels are going on. This particular Zoom design actually had what we call the butterfly roof design, which is two different pitches. Uh, typically the Zoom has just one pitch across the entire design and you'll see that in the show home. Put some temporary roofing on, a membrane roof. Hang the sign. Whoops. I don't know why these other things are showing up on my screen. I hope they're not showing up on yours. Put some, uh, some dummy photovoltaic panels on. Put some landscaping on. And again, I apologize if there's some stuff showing up on your screen. All right, that was it. We're gonna cancel this and see if we can get back to the presentation. All right, I hope you're all with me and I hope that you were able to see that time-lapse video and appreciate it. It was a lot of work and it was a lot of fun and we were glad we did it. So. A few pictures of from Greenbuild itself from 2015. There were big crowds that toured through the house. Um, 1,200, 1,300 people, something like that over the course of a couple of days. Um, the, this, I, I like this picture because you're sort of in the living room of the Zoom and you're looking out to what normally is a beautiful view of something. When we build these houses, they tend to be focused on nice views. In this case, you're looking out into the trade show hall, which is a little unusual. Um, there was a lot of media coverage. This is a photo of Ted Benson giving an interview, lots of interviews. And it was really for Unity kind of the, the national uh, debut of, of Unity or the, the debut of Unity on the national stage because Greenbuild is really a national conference. And, um, and this was really the first time that we had an opportunity to get the word out in a big way about Unity and what we were trying to do. So there were magazine articles and other sorts of things, uh, blog posts about this and we actually had a big party uh, that we called the National Launch of Unity Homes that was in conjunction with Greenbuild. So we rented a hall, invited a bunch of dignitaries and friends and fans, and it was a it was a wonderful time. There's uh, Dick Struthers chatting up with some folks, myself and Ted Benson and Ted's wife Christine at this event. Um, 
like I say, there were some some VIPs and sort of movers and shakers in the industry. The tall guy there is Scott Hedges, and he's an expert on Swedish offsite home building construction. So we consulted with him about Swedish methods when we were planning our new facility in Keene that we built in 2017. The gentleman next to him who's not so tall is named Lloyd Alter, and he's got a blog called uh, Tree Hugger that you might be familiar with. And so he's, he writes a lot of interesting blog posts about sustainability on Tree Hugger, and he's been following Unity quite closely. He actually wrote a blog post after Green Build that was titled something like Best in Show, and he was saying that normally it's a product or something that he's choosing to be the best of the Green Build show. But this year, 2015, he chose the Unity home, the demonstration home, as sort of his his best in show choice. So that was that was nice. There was lots of speechifying. We all had a good time. Uh, and then we had to, uh, then it was over and we had to take it apart and bring it back to Walpole and reassemble it. So here we are back in Walpole, New Hampshire. You can see those same modules again. That's the kitchen module, which survived its trip down to Washington DC and back again. <clears throat> We're putting the house on a crawl space, which is kind of unusual. Normally with Unity Homes, we put them either on slabs or we put them on full foundations. Sometimes those full foundations are walkout foundations, a daylight foundation where you can, you know, you have windows and a door in your foundation because it's a sloping site. In this case, uh, we probably would have done this on a slab if it wasn't for the fact that we had had to assemble it in Washington, D.C., and, and everything had to have a floor system in order for us to be able to assemble it in the trade show. So since we had these floor systems already, we thought it would make sense to actually stick it on a crawl space. Um, we couldn't go much deeper than that because of issues with the site. But uh, anyway, this ended up on a crawl space, and you can see us putting it together there. There's the kitchen again, um, starting to come together with the rest of the house. There's some roof panels going on. We did this right around Thanksgiving in, um, in 2015. So we were kind of trying to beat the weather, put it together just before Thanksgiving and then take a break. And that's how it, that's one view of it. And you can see in, in this case, it's gonna have nice views over to Vermont or it does have nice views across the river to Vermont. Here's the other side, the money side, and we're getting ready to put in some piers that will support those exterior decks. And we beat the weather, um, but it did snow early that year. And here you can see that we've assembled the connector that's going to then attach to the garage when the weather gets a little bit better. But um, these were components that we fabricated here uh, and then subsequently added after the house was returned to Walpole, the connector and the garage. All right. And that photo was taken not too long ago um, on a beautiful spring day here in Walpole.